Joining me now is Democratic Congressman from California, Ro Khanna. He's also a member of this China Select Committee, and he participated in this war game yesterday. And so, Congressman, that's what I took away. And we did not, we did a, we did a shrunken version of it. You guys spent time also on the economic sanction front, the sort of the pre, the pre, uh, pregame, if you will, before exchanging military fire. You tell me, what did you learn? What, what did you, what didn't you know going in that you're glad you know now? Chuck, first, the overall lesson is that a war with China would be devastating and catastrophic for humanity yep. and the United States. So anything we can do... There's no winner. Maximum we, we, nev we never had a winner. There's no winner in this. There's no winner, and it means thousands of loss of life and right. economic catastrophe. Here's what surprised me. Under this scenario, there was an assumed no communication between the United States and Beijing in our military political leadership. Now, our committee had met with uh, Bob Iger uh, and Tim Cook uh, about a week ago, and Bob Iger has been to China 45 times. My impression was Bob Iger understands China more than probably many people in our military, our business relationship. Uh, probably has more channels of communication, and we need to figure out how we keep the lines of communication open uh, at the same time uh, for our military. And that was uh, really eye-opening to me that we had no communication. Why did why was that assumption made? Obviously, this has been an issue right now. I mean, China is bl continues to block a rescheduling of Secretary Blinken's uh, trip to the nation. Well, we don't have the same formalized agreement that we did with the Soviet Union, where we had military-to-military -military communication, where we had uh, methods established where secretaries of state could communicate. Uh, and right now, I think Secretary Blinken uh, has done a very good job of trying to figure out how we are tough and make sure we're rebalancing the economic relationship with China, making it clear that they cannot invade in any way Taiwan, but also having uh, communication. and. That needs to be formalized. We need to do a lot more to formalize that. Let me ask about the economic uh, aspect to this, the sanctions. Gallagher, Mike Gallagher told reporters today that you played out those economic and financial moves and the counter moves. Describe to me what that looked like and, and, and why do you think it didn't work in this exercise? Well, it didn't work because to the extent that, that Xi Jinping is going to be motivated to invade Taiwan, it's uh, out of a cultural reunification. It is af out of a sense of uh, uh, having China restore to, to their nation that they see before the humiliation. And they're factoring in all of the economic consequences. They're factoring in that we control the Strait of Hormuz and can uh, block some of their oil supply. And they're factoring in that they may be able to get that from Russia. Uh, and so if they actually take that step, it becomes very hard uh, to deter them. And that's why the deterrence and the prevention has to be beforehand. I actually think that the strategic ambiguity has served the country quite well in deterring it. And when I was in Taiwan, I led a bipartisan delegation. We heard the same from the DPP. Yes, help us get arms and, maybe, and have defense, but continue to have engagement. We've lived with the Chinese up, up and down for the last 40 years. We want to be se secure, but we also want to continue the business relationship. I'm curious what you thought of the exercise. And is it something, you know, when I had uh, um, uh, Mikey Sherrill and, and Mike Gallagher participating in this one, what we did, they both said, boy, more members of Congress ought to do this. Congress ought to do this more often. It was not something that was a regular thing. What did you make of it, and is it something you'd like to see more of? I thought it was constructive. I thought it was done well. One of the things I want to just praise uh, Chair Gallagher is he's really tried to take the politics out of this. They're yeah. not the grandstanding speeches. And I think it's helpful. I do think one thing that would be helpful, though, is uh, to figure out what would prevent war in the first place. I mean, we started with China is invading. And I guess the questions I would want, to, to your point about an Asian NATO, is if we did move X or move Y, mm -hmm. would that deter China? And to game out what are effective deterrence uh, yeah. strategies for China. What do you, I mean, do you think we should be putting together uh, a Pacific alliance that looks like NATO? I think 
We need to be uh, increasing our defense and arms sales to Taiwan, and we need to make sure we have long-range missile capacity in, uh, in in places and allies where where Japan, Philippines, India. Uh, I don't know if we need to have a formal structure of NATO, but we right. definitely need to strengthen the alliances and have the military capability, both naval. Mm -hmm. uh, to make sure there's no blockade and to make sure that there's no uh, amphibious landing. Uh, I want a quick political question for you. Any regrets about going public with your, uh, with your uh, call for Senator Feinstein to resign? Were you the right person to be the one to call for it in California? I don't know if I was the right person, but I said what is the truth, which is that the senator has just not been able uh, to fulfill her duty, Fred, 75% uh, missed votes. Uh, today, the Judiciary Committee nominated or passed seven uh, candidates, but they didn't uh, pass five of them because Senator Feinstein is not there. And in private, a lot of people have said, yeah, Ro, thanks for speaking out. Now, I know, look, I'm co-chairing Barbara Lee's campaign. Right. Uh, it, I heard that, that Gavin Newsom should appoint someone else. I mean, so don't, don't appoint uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of the candidates running. So I don't think that that creates a conflict. If I was out there saying, go appoint Barbara Lee, yeah. it would be different. I'm curious, you still comfortable with uh, President Biden seeking re-election? Absolutely, absolutely. I, you know, they... They've uh, named me as one of the 20 people uh, to be a surrogate for him. I'm hoping to be out there uh, making the case. Uh, have you been asked uh, to be a formal part of the campaign? You just said that. Is that something they're lining up right now? Th th there's a, there was a report in the Washington Post. I learned about it, reading about it in the papers, that, that, that I was named to one of these as 20 of his surrogates. Uh, uh, to well, be Well, you clearly have said country. yes, right? And I've said yes, and, okay. uh, and I think everyone, well, look, he's been a successful president, and Chuck, here's the view, and you know I've been traveling around the country. I yeah. still think he's our best bet in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, gotcha. in Wisconsin to win those states. All right, I'm up against it. Uh, we'd have plenty Thank more you. to talk about. Good to see you, Congressman. Appreciate you taking uh, some time and telling us about this war game. Uh, Thank Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.